Game ready drivers have been around for what feels like forever, but for those who are mostly into just gaming, you might wonder what in the world studio drivers are. So in this video, we'll try discussing the main points of each and what they should best be used for. As many of you probably know, game ready drivers are best suited for video games. It's built with a priority for ensuring compatibility with the latest titles and ensuring that it doesn't run like buns on those games. This is just my opinion, but they fail a lot on that part. And that honestly is all that it does. Just ensures that you can play new games, tries to give you better performance, and it adds on support or improvements for special features like DLSS. Now for studio drivers, a lot of you likely don't know what it's used for specifically, which it is used for creative professionals, and no, not like Fortnite creative, for applications like video editing, 3D modeling, animation, AI workflows, and other tasks that fall along that line. It has a major focus towards professional grade creative software. So applications like Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve should all see some big improvements to this. While game ready drivers might focus on raw speed, Studio drivers focus more on stable performance over that raw speed, as in most situations that tends to be more important for creative applications. Studio drivers are updated much less frequently, but they are more thoroughly tested and tend to only be released when there are major improvements or when new creative software certifications are added. And I'll throw up a little graph to provide a summary in case I lost anyone along the way. Trust me, I probably would be too, so feel free to pause it and take a look over for as long as you need. And now, out of of curiosity, I wanted to see how well they performed in a gaming session, which sometime in the future I do want to do a test for the best studio drivers for rendering, and I know not a lot would be interested in that, but it's caught my attention, so I, I the way I work, I just, I gotta do it. So using both the same number driver and our benchmark, there was as expected, a noticeable difference in the frame performance, with the average being 5.45% lower. And I honestly expected more of a difference, but only lacking about 5.5 is not too shabby. When we go on to looking at the latency effect that it had on the system, Studio Drivers actually had better latency on the DirectX kernel, and had very, very slightly better latency on the NVIDIA driver. So. Definitely not too shabby at all. Thanks for joining my strange experiment. Leave a like on the video and check out my Twitch where we all hang out a lot. And make sure that YouTube notifications are set to all so then YouTube fills you in on all of my content, not just some of it. Love y'all, appreciate ya, and I'll see you in the next one.